Welcome back to the Perfect Portfolio, and I'm so excited tonight. We've been we've been we've been building this thing for like two and a half years. We've been um, figuring out all of this, the the uh, the secrets to how billionaires make money, pay very little in taxes, and we've got it systematized. It took us a long time to do it. This is really a 25 year project for me because I started studying finances 25 years ago. So this is all 25 years of information writing three books on finances, all that stuff came into this one course. And uh, it wouldn't have happened without coronavirus, which is crazy, right? Like that's, and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, so we have, uh, anyways, I'm here with my, my wife here and she's right next to me. She's going to poke her head in here and say hello. Oh, and there she is. There we go. Oh, say, there we go. The, everything's you, but you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the, the new world of, uh, of Zooms and, and things like that. So I see we have a bunch more people uh, joining as we speak. We have, uh, I think this will be the biggest class we've ever had for the Perfect Portfolio, or, and, and they keep getting bigger. Um, so I want to say, if, well, welcome, guys. This is We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We're going to teach you. We'll give you so much value just today that I don't think there's any other course in the country that will give you this much value in a two-year period, okay? We're going to cover um, just so much stuff. I'm excited to teach you guys. Okay, so... We have a lot of uh, some past students here. Uh, we have our, our chief operating officer, AJ Merrifield, is here with us today. He's in he's in Austin, Texas, and uh, we're in we're in Tennessee right now. So we moved here to get away from taxes, and uh, we we uh, and uh, now we're actually implementing the tax codes that we're going to use in the course to pay no state or federal income taxes for like the next two three years. Okay, so it is possible. Um, we teach you everything, everything that we use, that I use, that my wife uses, my sister uses, my all my best friends, all the tax codes and investment strategies we use. We we're going to talk about them all over the next eight weeks. Um, so, um, but uh, oh, I guess um, let's see. We got okay, good. We had, we got thirty one people here. I know there's a lot of people who can't attend. Uh, so they asked if they can attend, can we? They watch the recording. So we'll we will be recording this. Obviously, uh, we can send this out. If you watch this and say, man, I know five other people who need to at least see this course, uh, we'll send you the recording and you can send it out to a bunch of people and they can watch it. Okay. Um, so um, so I guess no questions today. This isn't a QA. Uh, we want to give you a bunch of information uh, on what the course is, how it works. Um, some examples. I'm going to show you my personal investment accounts, at least some of them, and um, and you'll see ex how I invest. The strategies will back it up with, um, you know, uh, uh, tax codes. They're not like, ooh, experimental tax codes we're trying out. These are all federal tax codes. I only write about federal tax codes that never really change, um, and they're and uh, they're they're all seemingly always getting better. Okay, so I do need two volunteers tonight, and I I don't know a lot of people tonight. This is very cool. I don't know a lot of people here. Uh, but maybe I can have two volunteers. How many of you who's never heard of like buy, borrow, die or something like that? Maybe somebody who's never heard of that before. Um, and maybe Fran, I know we, I talked to you earlier. Um, I don't know if you want to be one of my volunteers, but I just need two volunteers. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm just going to ask you some questions. And then it's really about seeing um, how perspective can change over this next two hours. So anybody want to volunteer as a oh yeah luke or cameron awesome dude let me see cameron where are you i think you have your i think i saw you all right cameron's gonna volunteer awesome cameron look forward to me but by the way cameron where are you from how'd you end up here i have no idea um i was born and raised in houston texas i currently live in chicago though sweet okay cool cool what, what... Uh, i ended up here i actually um uh, i found your youtube actually last night and that's when i learned about the buy borrow die strategy so okay Cool. It's all, well, it's all definitely new to me. Okay, cool. All right, good. Well, if if, if you happen to have see, seen, you've already seen some of the answers, um, maybe don't ruin it for everybody. But if if maybe, okay, so I'm going to have you as a volunteer, Cameron, somebody else so we can get somebody else to to uh, volunteer. I don't know. I think Fran said she was good to volunteer. Who is that? Fran. Oh, Fran. Okay, cool. Awesome. We got Fran and Cameron. Okay, cool. Fran and Cameron. Okay. So let's uh, let those couple people in and let's just jump into this uh, this presentation here. Uh, All right. Okay. I'm going to be right, right 
There's you, Dan. Dan, Dan, Dan. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's move these things out of the way. And here we go. Okay, cool. All right, guys. So uh, perfect portfolio. This is the class uh, introduction and the overview for the perfect portfolio. I don't know how many of these we, things we did, we started, but um, just during COVID, uh, I was told I needed to start a financial education company. Um, and because I've written, written, I wrote, I, was, I wrote two books at the time. So I took coronavirus and wrote a third book and then started the perfect portfolio. And, uh, you know, we've just, we've learned so much. We figured out what didn't work. We figured out what worked. We, we figured out how to optimize things. And, uh, and, uh, and then we came across Bible audit. So I'll just tell you a little bit about that story as we go through this, but, um, Okay, cool. All right, good. So anyways, uh, if you guys don't know my background, I, I am from Canada and, uh, you know, I've done a lot of different things uh, in my background, which I'll talk about, but I'm author of a three books. I'm an Amazon bestselling author. Um, I'm either, I was contacted by a pu big publishing company uh, a couple of days ago and they're like, man, we're really interested in working with you on. So there's a probably a fourth book in the pipeline, uh, which will cover a lot of the topics in this course. Uh, but uh yeah, uh, got got married in in, in Mexico. Uh, my wife is from Mexico. I'm from Canada, and we got married. We we'd known each other for many years prior to that, and it just uh, things came together during right before COVID, and and here we are together. We you know, so um, since then we moved to Knoxville, Tennessee. So we live in Tennessee right now. Um, we we wanted to travel more, so we we went to Trent to Toronto. We hung we spent some time with my brother. Um, uh, we got, we got to, I got to last year, I got to ride in an icon a five. That's that little plane there that it's, it's amazing plane. So that was always a, a dream. And I went to Texas and AJ had a hookup there and it got me into an icon a five. Um, I like, ho like hockey surprise Canadians like hockey and my, my nephews are all hockey players. And then we just like to travel. We want, we want freedom. We want, we want to work when we want. Um, we both don't have you know, jobs where we have to go to work every day and, and, you know, that sort of thing. My wife still works because she loves the company she works at. But if she said tomorrow, Hey, I, I want to go do real estate or something we're like rock and roll, let's do it. So, um, I, I was never used to be free before. Like I was stuck to a paycheck or stuck to these things and I just wanted freedom. So, um, took some risks and, uh, they're, they're working out very well. And we've have, we have a lot of people that are actually retiring. They're literally like, I'm retiring because of this course, or I have freedom, or I'm spending more time with my family. Or I'm I'm doing more stuff at my church or at a charity. We have so many students doing that stuff. It's been, um, it's been awesome, and that's just it's just starting to get back. It's getting get starting to get faster. So, very cool. Um, and uh, all right, let's jump into it. So, all right, so we're gonna learn a strategy. It's a billionaire financial strategy. It is is the number one billionaire financial strategy okay called buy borrow die okay you're like what is buy what does dying have to do with it okay so we'll give you a quick summary of buy borrow die we'll talk about where it comes from but first of all let's look at um here's our here's our our mascot uh, remy the robot and uh you know for the perfect portfolio and we're going to teach you how the rich pay no taxes okay and uh the the overall strategy is buy, borrow, die. And then of course, there's a bunch of real estate and other things you can do to not pay uh, income taxes. You have to pay your property taxes, but income taxes and and capital gain, long capital gains taxes, even dividend income, you can wipe all those, all those things and you can live without paying income taxes. The rich do it all the time, uh, but those strategies uh, have not been, been available to everyone. Now, let me ask you this. Oh, I'll ask you, let me cover that a little bit later. Okay. So the phrase buy, borrow, die was coined, coined by a prof university professor um, at the University of Southern California, and his name's Ed McCaffrey. Okay. Now, Ed McCaffrey did this huge study on how billionaires just, they, they their wealth just compounds and compounds and compounds and compounds. He's like, how are they doing this and paying little taxes? And he wanted to make it simple to understand. So he came up with buy, borrow, die. Okay, so okay, there he is, University of Southern California. All right, so let me give you an example. Let's say that everybody here inherited um, ten million dollars. Grandpa was an investor, 
and uh, he was an investor, and we all inherited ten million dollars. And you came to you came to a financial guy and said, "Hey, I got ten million bucks in my inherited, and I never want to work, and I never want to pay taxes. How would you do it? Pretty simple. Take the ten million. You go to you go find a somebody who a financial advisor who knows how to do Bible or die, and they they invest your portfolio." And they go, look, we're never going to sell it. We're just going to let it compound and we can make 10% return per year. Okay, reasonable. And it goes under management and it, it goes up. At, at If it, it makes 10% return, it doubles every seven years. So you start with 10 million now, you'll have $20 million in seven years. You're like, well, boy, how do I never pay taxes? You just take loans. Let's say you lived, wanted to live on $15,000 a month can, completely tax-free. Just take a loan secured by the portfolio. Securities backed line of credit, fifteen thousand a month comes to you. Next year, there's eleven million in the portfolio. You owe one hundred and eighty grand. Who cares? Because debt is not. You didn't have to work for the money, right? You didn't have to pay taxes on the money. So literally, you circumvented the U.S. tax system. Just don't sell it. Borrow from it. So that's this. That's it. Now you don't need to be um, super rich to do buy, borrow, die. That's the cool part. Okay, so we're going to cover that with you because doesn't help me, you know, knowing that Elon Musk can do it and these other guys can do it. But so you can, anybody of any income can, can do buy, borrow, or die. Okay. I don't care how much money you have or how little money you have. Anybody can do it. Okay. So, all right. So um, now why, but why don't financial advisors come to your home and talk to you about buy, borrow, or die? Any, any idea like this came from USC in the 1990s, by the way. So 1990s, you know, they do this study at USC and figured out, man, I borrow die. And then, but for some reason, it never made it to any into any educational curriculum in the world that I know of. It never made it into any of the big universities. My buddy went to Pepperdine. He never heard of it before. So he went, he was a financial guy at Pepperdine, never heard of it. USC guys, people could graduate USC, never heard of it. So how come financial advisors aren't taught by borrow die? How come CPAs aren't taught the strategy and it doesn't make it into any educational curriculum in the world. Hmm. I wonder, you ever wonder like, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Like maybe, you know, the, the funny thing is Mark, I, I have a friend of mine who actually graduated from USC law school and had professor McCaffrey really said that they didn't even cover it in his class. Wow. You kidding me? Wow. That's crazy. Interesting. Huh? So, huh. Do you think they, they don't want you to know this? Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. All right. So I grew up without without any financial education. Uh, my dad was a nickel and uranium miner in 1977, right? That's a very dangerous job um, in northern Canada. Uh, brick mason. I used to mix a lot of concrete with my dad. Um, I mixed a ton of concrete. I've worked in factories. I've done roofing. I've done air duct cleaning. I've done uh, I've spent days under houses, plumbing, electrical. I've done every factory work. I've done all those jobs, those hard labor jobs. I've done like all of them. Like I just, and I was like, man, my dad asked me one day, I was up on the scaffolding and, you know, my dad was laying the bricks, building a chimney in California. And he goes, Hey, Mark, do you want to learn how to lay bricks? I said, no. He goes, why not? I said, then I'll become a bricklayer. He goes, good point. He never asked me again, right? It was like, <laughs> so his dad was a fisherman. His dad never learned to read because his dad was killed in a fishing accident when he was 13. So at 13, you know, grandpa had to get on the fishing boat to, to raise the family. You know what I mean? Like crazy. So, um, so both of my parents died with no assets, no life insurance, no long-term care, literally no assets, like nothing. <laughs> okay. So I was like, so I grew up pretty poor. Okay. So I came to the U S 24 years ago, uh, no high school. I still don't have a high school diploma. I did go to college for financial, for finances, financial planning, economics, all that stuff. But about two and a half years, I was like, Hmm, I don't seem to be learning about making money here, but I sure seem to be accumulating a lot of student loan gets student loan debts and credit card debts. And I was like, something's wrong with this university thing. And I was like, this is a scam. And I left and I went to California and got a job as a security guard, minimum wage. But I was like, at least I'm in California, right? At least I'll be warm. <laughs> okay. And uh, security guard for minimum wage. I became a private investigator. So I used to chase people around with a video camera on workers' compensation claims. Did that for six years until 2005. And then I got recruited into the financial service industry. 
Okay. I then spent 15 years training insurance agents, investment advisors, registered investment advisor, fiduciary, financial advisors. <clears throat> and then I realized that the advice that they weren't giving was never really going to make people financially independent. And I'll tell you the secret. I was a financial advisor for CPAs. And the only thing they know how to do is, hey, put money in retirement accounts to save on taxes. And as the financial advisor, we would tell our clients, put money in retirement accounts to save on taxes. And I knew that was completely wrong, okay? Because I had written top 10 ways to avoid taxes, which talks about um, how it can double, it's really double taxation on the back end, even if you're middle class, and there's no way you're going to be in a lower tax bracket. I, I was like, that's complete lie, okay? And I couldn't stay looking people in the eyes and keep selling these mutual funds and retirement accounts and actually feel good about what I was doing. Okay, so I was like, I'm out. I gave it up. I gave up all the passive income. And we, st you know, we started a company called Remy Group. And then Remy Group was in-person seminars. They all got canceled during coronavirus. And then we started the perfect, perfect portfolio. So, but it was a long path to get where we are today. Okay. Um, I realized my clients were not getting financially free or retiring. And I had to change my thinking. I had to pull my head out and go, wait, what are the rich people really doing? Because they're not doing what, what these guys were. And I had some clients and I never quite figured it out. They would have large portfolios and then they'd get line of credits and they would, and they would, and they borrow from the line of credit. I was like, why would they do that? Like, I, it was like, nobody really understood why the rich people love line of credits. Okay. Um, instead of in liquidating the portfolio. So anyways, it took, it took a little bit to get here. So, um, but written three books, uh, rich man, poor bank was uh, started in 2009, finished it in 2014 five years to write my first book. Brutal. It was just, it was agonizing, but I was like, all right, when it was done, it was awesome. Okay. Uh, top 10 ways to avoid taxes were written and it was in the unit. It was a heart surgery at age four, at 14, 40, 40, <laughs> uh, minim minimally invasive heart and valve repair at age 40. And I was like, woke up. It was a crazy story in the start of the book, but I was like, I got some time on my hands. I had this crazy story that just happened to me. And I just started writing and wrote uh, a lot of this. The format was uh, for top 10 ways to avoid taxes was written in the intensive care unit, U intensive care unit of, U of USC Keck Hospital. Okay. And then finally COVID, I was like, I need to write a book on what's called index universal life insurance. And it covers the topic of other people's money. Okay. How many people know what other people's money is? OPM? Anybody know what OPM is? Okay. OPM is the secret to building wealth. Okay. If you ever read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or all these books, they talk about OPM. And I, I got it kind of, but I didn't really get it. Okay. So I, I was like, I got to expand on this in this course. Okay. So there's my, there's me in uh, Thompson, Manitoba. I'm the kid in the blue jacket there. I was, uh, you know, my dad used to mine nickel and uranium underground. And then Christmas came, he used to chop down the tree and it was like, you know, hunting and fishing. And it was a crazy cool life. Actually, it was, they, they had a great time there, but it was kind of cold. <laughs> so, okay. So the purpose, purpose, I was like, all right, the perfect portfolio, we started it. We had, all right, what are we going to call it? Do we have to, our, who's our mascot going to be? It just kind of came over time as we were building this course. So we wanted a purpose. We said, look, raise your financial IQ. See, I don't, it doesn't matter where you are. If you just raise your financial IQ, you're going to win, right? So raise your financial IQ a little bit every single day, okay? Now you have to separate financial education from banking education, okay? Very different. In fact, they're opposite. I don't consider what other people consider financial education. It's not financial education. It's banking education, Okay, and I'll tell you the difference. So raise your financial IQ, just raise it with the right information. Okay, all right. Teach you to fish. I was like, Psh. I was like, these financial advisors aren't doing anything. We'd we'd like set up portfolios in stock and bond mutual funds, and then we really couldn't do anything. We couldn't give our clients advice. Collect fees, literally doing nothing. And I was like, that's just not good value. That's just crazy, right? Is you know, and that's what most financial advisors do. They charge you a fee to invest in something that does worse than an index fund. Like, right. So I was like, okay, we got to teach people to fish. So we built a system that can kind of run and make money and works well for buy, borrow, die. Okay. So I wanted to automate your income. Okay. The term retirement account. Okay. First of all, let me give you some facts. 
the government is taking is going to soon the government is going to accumulate 5.2 billion dollars more every day in debt every day 5.2 billion dollars more in debt every single day that's crazy <laughs> And people are putting money into retirement accounts so they can retire, and they're told they're saving money in taxes. That is completely wrong, <laughs> okay? Instead of putting your money in a retirement account, why don't you direct that money towards building passive income so you can retire early? Isn't that better? <laughs> Where do, I mean, it's cr like, anyways, we're, we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm, I don't want to go on a rant right now. We'll do that later in the course, okay? So I wanted to create 1 million new millionaires. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take us. We're probably going to have to automate this on a larger scale, put it into an app, recordings, a bunch of stuff. But but we're getting a lot of momentum because we have a lot of our students who are teaching. We're having somebody who learns it and then learn, teaches another person and it's growing very fast. A lot of it's on referrals. Existing students are referring uh, uh, them to their friends and family and just other students. So we're growing very organically. Okay. Um, so first of all, what is money? Okay, so I'm going to ask you guys, what is money? Fran and Cameron, um, I'm ask you, what is money? Like, what is money? Anybody know what is money? Well, how would you define money? Yeah, to my understanding is uh, stored time and energy. Uh, it's potential in a lot of ways. And it's only potential when it's not put into use or in an asset or something that's uh, growing over time. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll give you a, a good def definition. But is is the money the the paper? Is the money the paper? Or what is, what is it like? Is is the money here? Is this money? Is that the money? Or what is the money? <laughs> what is money? Anyway, what is Fran? What is money? Any ideas? Well, I would say it's a tool for freedom. Okay, tool for freedom. If you get enough of it, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll help you define what money, or at least what you what used to be money, or the characteristics that money used to have. Okay, and it's going to help you understand um, first of all how to, what to do to build wealth. Okay, so let's cover what is money. For something to be money, it should have three characteristics. We agree it has value. If we agree it has value, we go. All right, this is a one dollar bill. It's worth one dollar. Great. We we all agree. Boom. There there it is. That's the first characteristic is we agree it has value. Two, should be easily transferable. I can take this dollar, I can go, hey, boom, easily transferable, boom, number two. Last characteristic has to be there to be considered money. Limited supply. Has to. Without it, it's not real money. Guess what this isn't? It's not real money, <laughs> okay? So the thing that we're chasing every day, it's not real money. Okay, we're going to cover what is real money. Okay, or what it, what how money has changed. Because if you're going to like, I want to make money. Okay, well, what, let's first define that. Okay, so let's raise your financial IQ. Okay, so first of all, question, Fran and Cameron, how is money created? So most people think this is money. What would most people say? Money is created by doing what? Right. Most people think this is money. That right? They call it money, but how is the money created? Federal, like, the Federal Reserve flooding the market. Okay, so printing it, right? They Most people go, they print it. So I've done this so many times. The most common answer is, ah, they print it. Okay, so most common answer, they print it, right? There's the Federal Reserve, they're just printing money and that sort of, so they print it. Okay, cool. Now, who can create money? <laughs> who can create it? Who can create it? Anybody? Fran? Cameron? Who can I, create it? I would just say the government creates it. Most common answer, the Federal Reserve. It doesn't yeah, say okay. U.S. dollars. It says Federal Reserve note. <laughs> mm, it's a Federal Reserve note. <laughs> doesn't say money on it, right? So Federal Reserve note. Okay, so the Federal Reserve can create it. Can I create money? Can you create money? Cameron, Fran, can you create money? You can, I would say. Okay, you can. How about it, Fran? Can you create money? I can create a business that creates money. Okay, cool. Well, most people would say, nope, that's called counterfeiting. Okay, that's the most common answer we get in the course. So <laughs> that's counterfeiting. Yet you'll go to jail. We can't just throw this on the little press and 
press photocopy and create it, you'll go to jail. That's called counterfeiting. That's the most common beliefs. Okay, next. Is that thing there? Okay, cool. Next we have, do I, do I have to work to make money? Yes or no? Cameron, friend, yes or no? Uh, no. Okay. No. Okay, cool. Awesome. Cool. That's great. Most people say, yes, you have to work to make money. That's most people say, yeah, you got to work to make money. Okay, cool. That's fine. We're not here to, we're here to give you new ideas. Okay. So we'll, let's look at it. So let's evaluate this. Is the cow money? <laughs> Is the cow money? Does it have the characteristics of money? It's an asset. It's an asset. Okay. Okay. So so the cow, it has the, remember, it, it, it has the characteristics. It has the characteristics of about. We agree it has value. By the way, if that cast that cow is grass fed, like organic fed cow, boom, that's even more valuable. That cow now. So that cow has a lot of value based on how it's what what it eats, what it's fed, whatever. Right? It's easily transferable. Okay, it's hard to bring the cows across and trade you pigs and cows, and it has limited supply though, very limited. So I can't. We can just pop out cows you know, good quality cows. So there's, it's always going to have limited supply. So cows always go up in value. Now, what they did before is they said, hey, instead of trading cows, let's write this piece of paper is worth one cow and money was born. It was a piece of paper backed by a cow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the piece of paper only had value because it was backed by the cow. Make sense? Okay. That's how paper was born. This, this paper. Next, silver coins. It says $1 on it. Right, it says one dollar. Okay, is that money? <laughs> yeah, it is because it's a precious metal. Exactly, it's real money. <laughs> What's it worth? Mm -hmm. It says one dollar, but here's a dollar. Right, this is worth a dollar, <laughs> but how much is that dollar worth? Slightly more than a dollar, yeah. or depending. Uh, depending twenty-two on bucks, the year. right? Price of silver. I don't know. Is it silver twenty-three bucks today or something? Yeah, so it's worth twenty-three bucks. Okay, cool. All right. uh, how much is a $2 bill worth? $2. Actually, no, they just sold a $2 bill for $4,000 because there's limited okay. supply on $2 bills. Are you serious? The older ones. The older $2 bills. Yeah, not the new ones, but the older ones could be worth we get it. 30 bucks. We can get a bazillion of them. Yeah, exactly. Good luck. A very limited supply. See, limited supply is the key to identifying money. Real money. Wow. has to have limited supply. Okay. Canadian dollars, US dollars, same thing, right? They're just, okay. How about Bitcoin? Is Bitcoin money? It's somebody. Bitcoin it money. Because it's a, it's a limited supply. It is. It can't create anymore. There's only a highly amount. limited supply. It actually has the characteristics of money when this doesn't have the characteristics of money. It has limited supply. Okay. Um, so yes, in other countries, they are using Bitcoin um, as money. There's two countries using Bitcoin as money. You know why? Because their paper became worthless. Did you know your paper money has lost 99% of its value since 1913? 99% of the value of the paper, gone, worthless. It's almost worthless compared to what it was. And that's the problem. As soon as you make it, print it like crazy, but it's not just being printed. And we'll talk about that. So yes, Bitcoin is, is actually has more value than money because it has limited supply, in my opinion. Okay. How about real estate? Had characteristics of money, right? It has value, easily transferable. Everyone's always going to need somewhere to live and it has limited supply. But if you take that house and you put it in Ohio somewhere, middle of Ohio, or you put it on a beach over, or overlooking a beach somewhere, which one's more valuable? Same house. Limited supply. You have a view, water front, uh, a spectacular view of some type. Boom, that house value goes up. So limited supply is the, the most important thing to identify when you're building wealth. Limited supply. Okay. Um, okay. Now, how about uh, the $20 bill? Again, money or not money? <laughs> it's actually fake. It's fake money. <laughs> and I'll prove to you why it's fake money because anybody can create it. And I'll actually, I'll prove to you that in a second, why it's so fake. It's, it's not really money. Okay. But um, this is an advantage. If you understand this, this is a huge advantage to understand that anybody can create money. Okay. 
All right, PyCoin. PyCoin's on my phone. It mines PyCoin. I just press the button and it mines PyCoin every single day on my phone. Okay. One day that PyCoin, I got 9,000 of them. Um, how many does my wife has? How many? Oh. About 5,000. So we got like 14,000. If it's 10 bucks a coin on an exchange, that's going to be 140 grand. If it's 100 bucks a chain, that's 1.4 million. We press, So we basically created money on crypto on a phone, on our phones. And then when it goes on exchange, we could maybe exchange that for $1.4 million of US. And what do we do? We press the button. <laughs> okay. That's it. Okay. So um, I don't know. A rumor is that Elon Musk has going to watch Tesla phone and it might mine cryptocurrency on your phone. That would be cool. I don't know. It's just a rumor, but that'd be, that'd be awesome. Okay. So how about, okay. So let's look at this. I'm going to prove to you that money is fake and anybody can create it. Let's say you go to Costco and you take a credit card, right? So I take your credit card, go to Costco and you swipe it and you buy a big screen TV. Okay. Who makes money? There's five people who, five people or organizations that make money as soon as you swipe that card. Who makes money? Anybody? Walker, the department store. Yep. So if, uh, it, if it's Costco, Costco makes some money. Hey, that's fair. Costco provides jobs, keeps our prices down. They pr provide a very valuable thing for the economy. Okay. So Costco makes some money. Who else makes money? The manufacturer. The farmer. Exactly. The, the TV, who, the guy who made the TV makes the, you know, Sony or LG makes the TV fair. Hey, they're, they're producing big TVs. TVs are getting cheaper. They're getting bigger, high quality. They're providing jobs. Hey, fair. Costco makes some money. TV can make some money. Great. Who else makes money? The bank, right? Swipe fee. Every time you swipe that card, the bank makes a fee. Okay. Swipe it three times a day. Boom. Bank makes a fee three times. Okay. If you don't pay off the credit card in 30 days, what happens? Interest. Boom. The highest crazy interest, predatory interest. It used to be legal, boom, they start hammering it on there. Okay. So then the bank makes money again, but who else? There's one other organization that makes money sales. every time you swipe it. What's that? Sales. The government taxes. You have to pay taxes on Taxes. Well, yeah, you have to pay taxes. Every time you swipe that card, the government collects a tax, state, federal, city, just massive amounts of taxes every time you swipe that thing. You know who loves printing money and causing inflation? Big government and mega banks. They get so wealthy and they're literally not providing any money to do it because you swipe it, $2,000 is created, right? But where did the money come from? You created it. You swiped the card and you created $2,000. You actually did it by swiping the card. You created two grand. When you pay it off, they just delete the entry. Most of the money is just a buttons. Press the button, create 2000 of debt. Press the button again, you pay it off, delete it. <laughs> but they're, they're charging interest and collecting taxes on nothing, on just starting and creating bank entries <laughs> and a computer. When you buy a home, they put a bank entry, 400 grand. You buy a home, oh, bank entry, you owe 400 grand. You default on the home, they delete the bank entry. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. So now here's the cool part. You've never been, you've only been taught to create money to make other people wealthy, specifically big banks and big government. We're going to show you how to make money for yourself. Because ta debt is tax-free, you can make money and never pay taxes on it, and you can create money out of thin air by pressing buttons, and you can avoid having to work for the money, okay? And I'll show you that exactly. So the point is, you've created money every time you swiped a credit card. You created money when you bought a car and when you bought a home. You just didn't know how to create it to make yourself wealthy. And that's the difference between this. people get super wealthy, they understand it. Everyone else is being told to do the opposite. When you go to school, do the opposite. When you become a financial planner, do the opposite. Teach your clients to do the same. Even the CPAs, they're being taught the opposite too. Because I'll never teach financial planners or CPAs how to do this. Because then actually too many people will get wealthy. Okay. So I'll show you. Okay. Let's, get, let's jump into this. Buy, borrow, die. Where did this thing come from? So let's, let's crank up some volume so we can hear. Okay. 
some of the very richest Americans pay little in taxes compared with how fast their fortunes grow each year. Now, they use a tax strategy known as buy, borrow, die. It's like the ultra wealthy are living on another planet. Average people need income to pay for basics like housing and food. But the ultra wealthy don't. They can just live on borrowed cash. Step one, buy. The ultra wealthy buy an asset or build a company or inherit a fortune. As long as they don't sell, they owe no taxes. They keep their income as low as possible since every dollar they earn can be taxed. Step two, borrow. They borrow against their holdings and the bank gives them a really good deal. I'll loan you $10 million with only 3% interest. But if you take a $10 million salary from your company, you'll owe almost 37% to the IRS. So the ultra wealthy use loan money to fund their lifestyles. That's how a billionaire can live the most luxurious life imaginable while reporting little to no taxable income. Step three, die. When they die, these lucky few often use complicated trusts and philanthropic foundations to avoid the estate tax. And their heirs can inherit stocks and other assets tax-free. A new generation is ultra wealthy and the cycle starts all over again. Pretty cool. So it's done. All right. So yeah, so if you're like a rich person and you have 10 million, they'll go, hey, I know we're telling everybody else to do this, but here, we'll take you over to this other department. We'll say, do you have a securities backed line of credit? We'll invest your money. Just live off of debt. Well, boom, there, that's how the rich are getting rich. They never sell. You realize if you have a portfolio of 10 million, seven years later, it's 20 million. Seven years later, it's 40 million. Seven years later, it's 80 million. Pass 80 million to the kids. Guess what the kids do? I got 80 million. Let's do buy, borrow, die. That's it. That's why it gets so wealthy. Generationally, buy, borrow, die can make your net worth just go through the moon, to the moon. <laughs> Literally, if you do it, your kids te do it, teach three generations in the family to buy, borrow, or die, your family's going to be very wealthy in a couple more generations, like super wealthy, okay? Now, all right, so, all right, so if you have 10 million, great, but um, what do you think the minimum is? And if you've been a previous student, don't mention this, but what do you think the minimum is before you can buy, borrow, die. The last time I did this presentation in Arizona, one guy was like 500 grand. One guy was like uh, 100 grand. What do you think you have would minimum you would need to do before you can invest and just press the borrow button and create money? What, how much minimum investment do you think? 2,000. Two grand, exactly. Okay. Anybody can do it. You got two grand in an investment account? You can. I can show you how to move it from Fidelity or one of those other brokerages, move it into a position, build you a cool investment account, and you can start creating money, right? And you can create a lot of it in the future. As the portfolio goes, just press buttons and create more money. As it grows faster, just press buttons and create more money. <laughs> Our class three is called pressing buttons. <laughs> we get wealthy by pressing buttons. <laughs> so crazy. So yeah, good article, Forbes, how the ordinary Americans can also buy, borrow, die without paying taxes. Okay, mm -hmm. cool stuff. All right, this was September 2021. Fibro never really leaked out into the to the general public until about early 2021. Okay, kind of buried, and then around 2021, we started teaching it in the course, but we didn't even know the name. It was like 2021 uh, before the article started going into um, you know the the public essentially. Uh, so you want to build a perfect portfolio, okay? Now, your perfect portfolio, we don't give financial advice. We're not financial advisors. We don't give tax advice, but you have. we can teach you a system and then you can decide what assets and how much and you can raise your financial IQ and you can invest in the assets, okay? We like the assets of stocks and ETFs because you can do buy, borrow, die. Life insurance, you can do buy, borrow, die. Cryptocurrency, you can do buy, borrow, die. Gold and precious metals, you can do a buy, borrow, buy, die, and real estate. Those five assets together work very, very well for building wealth and protecting it generationally. And you can do buy, borrow, die with all of them. Okay. So we built a cool system. And here's what we wanted to do. Remember, our goal, uh, Stella and I, was we wanted to build passive income. I wanted to pay less taxes and basically do what we enjoy. 
Okay. And I think most people would kind of want that because people go, people don't make money to make money. They make money because of freedom, right? To the ability to make, have better options is what I would say. Okay. So we wanted to build passive income streams. We wanted to automate your income. Okay. So here's how we did it. Okay. So if you look at um, build family banks on the left there is safely multiply the returns using other people's money or debt and build early retirement portfolios. We don't use retirement accounts. Retirement accounts are the worst asset, in my opinion, ever created because you're never going to retire on a retirement account. <laughs> I can take out a, a calculator right here, an easy calculator for, and do the calculations, right? If I do the calculations, let's say you do a thousand dollars, you do $500 a month and do a 401k and you get a match of $500 a month and do a 401k and you invest and get an 8% rate of return over 30 years. You'll have about $1.5 million in your account. 1.5 million. You're like, whoa, I'm a millionaire 30 years from now. Do you know much how much income you can collect out of a 401k with $1.5 million when you adjust for inflation? How much income do you think you can collect out of a 401k with $1.5 million in it 30 years from now? What do you think the income is adjusted for inflation? 200,000. 200,000 a year income? Okay. What else? Not think? a year. I mean, grand total. That's all you're going to get back. Okay. Anything? I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It's it's a thousand dollars a month. If you save in your 401k for 30 years, you get to live on a thousand dollars a month of income when you adjust for inflation and taxes. Okay. So, um, yeah, not, not so good. Okay. You're going to have a hard time living off of a thousand dollars a month. Right. So, okay. So basically you want to build retirement plans that aren't going to get wiped out with inflation and they build income now. And then you can basically borrow from those to create more income and accelerate um, the process. Okay. Next, the purple and the next is you can basically build stocks and ETFs, build those up, never sell them. When you never sell them, are they ever taxable? No, they're not. What if you take a loan from them? When you borrow from them, you can actually purchase life insurance and you can invest inside life insurance. Life insurance has some characteristics. It can provide life insurance and long-term care, investments with no risk, investments with no taxes, and you can take a loan secured by the cash value. So you can do buy, borrow, die with life insurance. Not all life insurance is created equally, okay? That's for the asset protection side. Then you could take a loan from the life insurance and you could purchase real estate, okay? Now, let's say, for example, you borrowed the down payment for real estate was a loan, and then you just borrowed the rest as a mortgage. How much of that money did you? What is your money in your in your investment? If you took a loan for the down payment and you took a the, and you just signed a mortgage document, that's money just created out of thin air. You could have a five hundred thousand dollar piece of real estate and not never put any of your money. That means that five hundred thousand was it ever taxed? No, you didn't have to work for it. And you didn't have to fight inflation. So you avoid, you avoid hard work, taxes, and inflation, <laughs> okay, with this buy, borrow, die system, okay? So you build that up and, awesome. okay, so buy, borrow, die, use other people. So you want to build family banks, okay? You want to build multiple family banks, invest here, grow that asset, borrow from that to fund asset number two. Have grow that, borrow from those two assets to purchase asset number three, and you have those five assets. Eventually, you can borrow from one as they grow and, and fund these either, and you're completely circumventing the U.S. tax system. Now, you have to have what's called a step up in basis. Step up in basis means that when you die, all the assets step up and are passed to your heirs 100% tax-free. The assets that I mentioned all get a step up in basis. Retirement accounts, traditional retirement accounts, 401ks, they don't get a step up in basis. They pass your tax problems to your children, okay? So retirement accounts, don't, they don't work for Bible or die. So they'll uh, passive, uh, no taxes, no risk, tax-free family bank, borrow to buy real estate. That's OPM again. You buy real estate, you borrow the down payment, the rest is a mortgage. That's OPM times OPM. That's really important, right? That's when you're really understanding that Better. It's it's if you, if you don't want to work hard and pay taxes, just learn how to use debt because it, it avoids work and taxes. Okay, and then you re simply repeat it. 
During the course, we have some relationships. We can show you how to build passive incomes with ATMs, car washes, oil and gas. They have what's called depreciation. Depreciation means tax-free income. <laughs> okay, We like lots of tax-free income because when you have tax-free income streams, funding a perfect portfolio, that's when you really get momentum. Okay, Is when you have tax-free income streams funding a Bible or die strategy. And that's when you really get momentum. It could take you somebody one, two, or three years. You could build a very powerful system that just compounds very, very quickly. And you can retire early, essentially. Okay. And our students are doing that. Then we also started by borrow die. It was actually 2024 when we figured out we could actually do it with gold and precious metals and cryptocurrency. So that was like the two pieces we were kind of missing. And then the portfolio was, was kind of complete. Okay. So, um, all right. All right, my perfect portfolio. I'm going to show you exactly the holdings of my portfolio. I'm going to show you how much money I borrowed. I'm going to show you my interest on the debt and how it's paid. Because people go, well, when do you pay it back? I'm like, when you die. Well, when do you pay back the debt? When do you, do you have to make payments on the debt? The answer is never pay it back and I'll never make payments on the debt. Okay, and I'll show you how we do that. Okay. This is my portfolio. This is a snapshot from yesterday. Okay. Everything in my portfolio has to do with stock options like they're all covered calls synthetic covered calls there's something in there where they put the money in u.s government securities they sell put options every single day and keep their money it just it just makes money every day by selling put options one day puts on the nasdaq right there's one in there there's one with a spx so it's three times the stock market there's um uh coinbase synthetic covered call on coinbase huge income coming in from selling options. Okay, so cool part is you don't need to know how options work. You don't need to become an expert in options. You can just buy a portfolio. It's managed for you. And uh, you can kick back and go to the beach. <laughs> okay, you can, it's it's fully managed for you. And you don't need a financial advisor to do this if you don't want one. Okay, so anyways, uh, we'll talk about this. Now, the ending value as of yesterday, I had $71,400 in here. Okay. Uh, there's as of yesterday and in 14 cents. Now, the 71,000, that's not my money. $31,700 is money that I borrowed. I just took it as I pressed the button and created $31,722. Okay. Now, question Did I have to work for the $31,722? Did I have to work? No. Press the if you, that our work for us is called pressing buttons. I had to I had to press the button a bunch of times. That was pretty hard work. My finger gets tired sometimes. Like oh man, so I'm like, hey babe, can you press this button for me? I, my work my finger's getting a little tired. Okay, did I have to pay taxes on the thirty one thousand? No, no, zero taxes on that thirty one thousand seven hundred dollars. Okay, did I have to earn it and fight inflation? How long does it take somebody to save up $31,722.22 of after-tax money? Years, <laughs> decade, and they they lose all the money to inflation, right? Okay, so Mr. Pogajeff, I think uh, we're going to mute you. There we go. Okay, so uh, yes, so you can create money and get financially independent, but you have to do this sometimes. It's like, like, oh, like sometimes a couple times a week, I don't press that button. Okay. Now, what about the debt? All right, cool. These are my dividends. That's just for four days. There was seven different dividends in the last 30 days that came in. That total is about $1,600. I actually ended up with about almost more than $1,900 just in dividends. And they come in every single month from this portfolio. Okay. Exactly $1,990 and four cents in dividends. And I paid $179.11 in interest. So how many times do you want to do that? Two grand a month in dividends and $179.11 in interest. Every month. When the portfolio was growing, you know what I was doing? I was waking up in the morning and I was pressing buttons and creating more money out of thin air. Last time, I, if you go to the last presentation, we'll, you know, we could send it to you, this portfolio I only borrowed $20,000. In the last three months, I just created $10,000 by pressing buttons. I literally did nothing. <laughs> Ten grand just by pressing buttons. So we all do this. Every single student learned how to do this. There's safe ways to do it, safeguards we pay, put in place. But yeah, anybody can do this. Okay. Now, the minimum to open up an investment account is 
one hundred dollars. That's a I know that's a huge amount of money to put in risk into an investment account, but it's one hundred dollars. And I'll have my assistant neurologist. She will take the link for the company we use, and she will put it in the chat. If you just press on that thing and register your account, you can open up an account and put a one hundred dollars in there. Now you got to get over up over two thousand dollars before the borrow button works. But anybody can do buy borrow die, and we'll we'll go through some details later on the course on this stuff. Okay, but those are the positions in there. I have some about 8% uh, uh, exposure to cryptocurrency. We've got stock market times three. I'm buying up a lot more Tesla, but the the the, the, the algorithm only buy Tesla when it's going down. <laughs> it doesn't buy it when it's going up. So very cool things about the, the way this portfolio is invested. Okay, my interest rate seven and a quarter. I'm getting about a 30% dividend. Okay, so here's a plan for when traditional financial planning used to be like, oh, get out of debt, get six to 12 months of emergency funds in your savings account for emergencies, oh, get some term insurance, max out that 401k to save on taxes, oh, get a will and trust, and uh, there you go, there's your financial planning. That's ridiculous, <laughs> It is ridiculous. I used to do it. I used to train hundreds of financial advisors. This is what we taught. That's not, you're never going to get financially free doing that. Okay. Because of inflation and taxes and the government has way more taxes, 5 trillion a day adding to the tax bill, right? Is it, they have to either print money or cause inflation to pay the bills. They have no way. The US will be $50 trillion in debt in 10 years. 50 trillion. <laughs> That's crazy. So they either raise your taxes to the moon or they print more money causing inflation. You're just not going to win. And if you keep following the financial advice, I guarantee it mathematically impossible to win. So that's why I'm saying like, you should learn this stuff. Okay. And your financial advisor can't teach it to you. Now, here's what it should look like. Automate your income, start building income streams now, and you can't do it with retirement accounts. Okay. Eliminate any debt above 6%. Now, if you like, oh, I'm going to pay off my debt. No, 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 no. Invest or take your investments, press the borrow button and get rid of your debt. Any bad debt, credit card debts, auto loans, any high interest debts above 6%, get rid of them. But you may not get rid of them by paying them off. Don't liquidate stuff to do them. Invest and then press the borrow button and get rid of the debt. That way you're investing all the money and you're getting rid of debt with low interest debt, but the money is earning a high rate and then the debt, the interest on the debt is that, right? You get ahead much faster that way. So we'll show you how to do that, okay? Um, earn at least 5 five plus percent rate of return on your emergency fund. All your lazy money should be at least earning more than 5% right now, okay? Fully insured, right? Buy life insurance and long-term care with other people's money. So if you're going to fund life insurance and long-term care, you have to either go work, pay taxes and earn it, or... You can just press a borrow button and fund your life insurance and long-term care, okay? Long-term care is very expensive. Tax, they're going to tax your paycheck soon if you don't purchase long-term care. They're rolling it out in California very soon. It's in Washington. There's 19 more states going to start taxing your income if you don't purchase long-term care. Not only that, it could you could lose all your assets. So we covered that in the course too, okay? All right, next. Increase the returns and reduce the risk on all your investment accounts. If you show me an investment account, I'm like, oh, I can show you how to increase the return. If you got an index fund, I'm like, oh, we can increase the returns on that investment account pretty easily. Okay. Like beat the S&P 500. That's really easy. <laughs> okay. With this stuff we do. Okay. All right. So and become financially free and retire early. Okay. Go to the perfect portfolio. Read some of the testimonials. We've got a bunch on YouTube. We'll launch a bunch more student testimonials in the next couple of weeks. Okay. And we'll keep watching them. People retiring. I'm financially independent because of the perfect portfolio. I thought I was going to work till I die. And now I'm financially independent. We have tons of those testimonials coming out right now. Okay. So there's seven levels of financial intelligence. Okay. Now tell me if this sounds familiar. Okay. Level one, I don't understand anything, right? We all kind of started out when we all say, oh, we were born and we, at some point we said, man, I don't understand anything about money. Congratulations. This is a huge advantage. You've not been brainwashed by the publicly traded financial companies. Congratulations. If somebody came in and said, I don't know anything. Wow. It's so much easier to teach you. <laughs> so much easier to teach you. Okay. You know, it's funny. People are so skeptical of this course when they're like above a certain age, right? 
I don't, I don't want to age anybody here, but they're kind of a skeptical. 19-year-old comes in this course, they invest, press buttons, totally normal for them. Their whole life, all they know is just, I invest in press buttons and create money. They have no, like, that's totally normal for them. <laughs> and it's totally normal for our students right now. But the skeptics are always like, well, Dave Ramsey said this, and my financial advisor says debt is bad, but your financial advisor is going to die broke unless they take your money and give it all to Wall Street. Okay. Might want to think about that. Okay. So if you don't understand anything, awesome. So much faster working with you. Now a person goes, all right, mom and dad, they go to college, university, mom and dad. And so, whoa, what do I need to do? Parents say, well, you got to save money and get good credit. Save money and get good credit. You know what that means? When you save money, banking, banking corporations get wealthy. Big government gets wealthy. When you get good credit, Banking corporations get wealthy and big government gets wealthy because both those things make banking corporations and big government lots of money when you do that. Okay. Save money and get good credit is about making Wall Street wealthy, not about really helping you in any way. Okay. So when we borrow, do you know what we have to do? There's no application. There's no credit check. It doesn't go on our credit score and there's no payments on the loans. <laughs> like, that's cool. We have great credit, but I don't need it to borrow money. I don't even put in an application. I just press buttons and create money, avoid taxes, and I can do it over and over again. Okay. You've only been you've only been taught to make publicly traded mega banks wealthy. Save money, get good credit. That's to make banking corporations into very large organizations because all right, level three. Person goes, All right, man, I'm saving money, getting good credit. I got three credit cards. I got a auto loan no what do i do next they go oh save for your retirement financial they walk into their bank and they go oh speak to so and so she works at the bank she's going to set you up a retirement account so you can retire they're like oh they're a financial planner let's go do that and they walk over and they say oh max out your 401k to save on taxes right that's going to help you retire one day like Wow. And know what's the crazy thing? The financial advisor believes it because that's all they've been taught. So they're ethical people. They want to help people, genuinely want to help people, but they've been brainwashed by Wall Street. I guarantee it. Okay. We'll we'll go through this in the, the orientation class, like where the system comes from. Where does the term financial advisor come from? Who created the term financial advisor? Think about that. Who do you think created it? Wall Street. Who created the term investment advisor? Wall Street. Who created the term retirement account? Wall Street. You know what that meant? Hey, just, just don't think about it. Just give all your money to Wall Street. <laughs> and then the government's like, wait, we can tax that at income tax rates on the back? Boom. Sign them all up. <laughs> okay. So, hey, so that's just thing. So, You've been you if you if you go to a financial advisor, especially work for one of the bigger banks or or um you know large uh, publicly traded corporations, you've been educated by bankers and financial advisors that work for publicly traded companies that have a fiduciary responsibility to shareholders. Fiduciary responsibility may, means they're not they're really there to help you. They're there to maximize the profitability for the shareholders. That's by law they have to do it. So that means pay you nothing on your savings, get you into highest possible interest debt for the rest of your life and lock you in there for life, charge you as many fees as they possibly can when you're not looking, and turn you into a passive income stream for ge the, the generations of your family. And that's what level three does. It does, it accomplishes those three goals for the banks and, and Wall Street. Okay. So that's that's basically level three. Now, level four, see, AJ uh, on here today, he goes, Man, if you don't know what OPM is. You're the OP in other people's money. It's true. That's level three. Now, level four, you guys have just been shown what level four is. And you go, whoa, I need to use OPM in my investing. And that's where you are today. Okay. As I need to use other people's money in my investing. Okay. You calculated that if you're in 10% rate of return on your investments, that is mathematically impossible to build wealth after deducting inflation and taxes. So, you know, welcome to level four. Okay. All right. So let's ask you a question. Uh, we asked, you had some different 
questions, right? How is money created? Okay, so what would your answers be changed? Pushing a button. Pressing buttons. Okay, that's funny, great. And who can create money? We can. We can. Anybody can create it. Can I create money? Yes. Awesome. And do I have to work to make money? Sometimes, but not really. Not really. Good. Awesome. There you go. So, well, I mean, it depends, Mark. Is, does does pushing a button count as working? I don't know. It's like <laughs> sometimes I get up my morning, I'd get work a little workout, strengthen up, <laughs> and I switch bigger, up like, and down oh, and up and down and up and down. <laughs> and, uh, oh man, this one's tired. I go, all right, let's switch this one. And all right, so it's, it's kind of hard sometimes. So, yeah. Okay, cool. So here's what we're gonna do. We want to um, complete. You guys, we're gonna send you a Google form, and you can fill it out, and you can in, we can invite you back to the class. We'll send you some free chapters of the book, Top Ten Ways to Avoid Taxes. Okay. We want to help help you eliminate debt above above six percent. We can work with you on the course to do that. We show we show you how we how we invest. Um, again, not financial advice, but we can show you how we invest, and you can. You know, um, you can ask us about that and then you can raise your financial IQ um, and learn learn how that stuff works. Okay. When, when you take the first steps to automating your income, uh, Neral, we gave you that link and you can open up an account and just put $100 in there. Open it up, a taxable brokerage account, put a hundred bucks, connect your bank, get a hundred bucks in there. And then we can, you can even use the, you can look at this video, build your up a, a pie. And then as you go through the course, you can as you raise your financial IQ, you can just, you can decide to add more money if you want. Okay. And then you can book a time with me uh, if you decide to join the course. So proper protection, life insurance, long-term care. If you don't have that, it's going to be a big tax problem for you. And not only that, it could cause your family to lose all their assets. The lack of long-term care. You should learn that. Uh, building tax-free family banks. Uh, there's a great uh, philosopher named Chris Rock. He says, you don't pay taxes. They take taxes, right? So I was like, you know, that's definitely not true because you voluntarily give taxes if you don't educate yourself how to avoid taxes, right? They can't take taxes from people who know that they don't legally owe taxes to the IRS, right? So it's it's a perspective of anything. And, uh, you know, you can actually text us the word taxes to that 800 number, that 833 number there, and we can send you um, a, a chapter from the book, Okay. And you go from there and uh, you, can t you can continue learning. Like I said, your, the purpose is to raise your financial IQ. So you can uh, follow us at The Perfect Portfolio, um, my Instagram, The Perfect Portfolio Instagram, our YouTube channel. Um, now, the cost of the course, now the three chapters, you can test this overview, the orientation class and the class three, no charge. But the cost of the course is $2,195. You want us to do full full. Financial needs analysis, help you guide, move stuff around. There's a lot of work and time involved in that, okay? But you can raise your financial IQ for free, keep learning, whatever. But if you want personalized help and advice, if you want uh, our, our, C our CPAs, our CFPs, they can help. We actually have fiduciary financial advisor relationship. So we have to bring some of those guys in, uh, you know, but 2,195, you get access to the whole course. Um, now, I've got a challenge for you though, Okay. What's worth more, $100,000 in a fancy university to get a financial diploma or $2,195 in this course? What do you think? Hundred grand. I, I guarantee you, go to any university, fancy financial university, take financial classes, business classes, economics classes, whatever, go through the entire thing and, and see if it's worth more than a I've, if, I've, I've taken those classes at a fancy university, Mark. I ain't taking that bet. I know. I know. I challenge you because we had a guy do it. He was like, he's like, man, I just spent a hundred grand in school. And at that time, the course was 1500 bucks. He goes, I could have spent $1,500 and I learned more than I did four years and accumulated a hundred grand in student loans. And he's like, this course so much better. Okay. Than what we do. So, Hey, you know, I mean, you can cost versus value, right? So Okay. Now the, the, if somebody invited you here, they get paid a referral fee. Okay. We actually have people that are, you know, make good money part-time, just helping teach people the perfect portfolio. And they didn't, they didn't, they didn't think they were ever going to do that. They're like, this is awesome. How do I teach other people this and make money? And you can do that. Okay. 
Um, learn, attending the next two classes for free, just raise your financial IQ. At least maybe you come here and go, man, I learned a ton of stuff. Not for me, we were part as friends and you can keep learning on our YouTube channels and stuff like that, right? Keep learning. But that 2,195 bucks, it might change your legacy forever, generationally. <laughs> and I'm willing to put, and I'm willing to bet on that too. Okay. If you, if you keep raising your financial IQ, and you learn the content. Okay. So Wednesday, April 17th at 6 p.m. is the orientation class. Um, 24th, 6 p.m. is class number one. And then, then decide if you want to continue the class. Okay. Take your time, learn, raise your financial IQ. Um, and uh, you know, and come back and see us. Okay. And we'll have a special guest speaker for at least one class. Um, it's usually nine classes because we'll have a special guest speaker talk in one or maybe two classes, depending on um, the direction of the course. Uh, the course has to be updated because there's, here's the thing, Bible or Die was impossible three years ago for the average person. It just wasn't possible to do this three years ago. Even in the past three years ago, we've made positive change in the course and it's just so much better. So I definitely, uh, we have to kind of change it and tweak it, but it's so incredibly powerful at this point. Like you're, you're arriving at the right time here. Okay. To this course. Okay. So this was a, a, somebody who messaged me yesterday. Okay. This is one of our past students. Okay. He was a mortgage broker for 32 years. He came into the course. This is the early stages of the course when we were kind of like learning it and we we're experimenting what works. And he said, I'd like to publicly thank Mark for sharing and teaching me how to, to how and what to do so I could retire from 32 years in the mortgage industry, half a having cardiac arrest back in August, came in the course, mortgage broker, started learning this stuff, building passive income. We got him less life insurance, long-term care, and then he almost died. <laughs> okay. And fortunately, he, he, you know, recovered. He has great life insurance, long-term care. And you know what? He was able to retire. He's fully retired after 30 years and 32 years in the mortgage industry. So um, his wife and him and his are so, and this is, it's not like a uncommon thing. This is happening more and more. Robert down at the bottom, 25 years and working for one of the largest financial services company in the world. <laughs> okay. In their retirement planning department came into the course and goes, Whoa, you kidding me? Everything we've been teaching for 25 years is different. It's almost the opposite. So anyways, we have, we have lots of like tax guys and financial guys who came in this course and just, uh, you know, it was hard for them to get it though. It's the person who doesn't know anything, they get it right away. The person who's been, you know, taught to think a certain way, they have a hard time, you know, getting it sometimes. Okay. So, all right. So here's our you perfect portfolio Instagram. Our uh my Instagram has some of the same content, our YouTube channel. Go check it out. Um, we are gonna record this. We'll send you a copy of the recording, and we're also gonna be placing it on our YouTube channel. Okay. And Question, did we raise your financial IQ today? Anybody raise your financial IQ? Did yes. You your financial IQ, awesome. Awesome. Yes. I can't see how many people are counting, but if you raise your financial IQ, that's a successful thing. Now, just because you did it one day isn't going to do it. You're going to have to raise it a little bit every day. Okay. Next 365 days, I challenge you to raise your financial IQ with the right content though. Next 365 days, change your legacy forever. You teach that to your family. You can change it. Your ge generations down the road, your family can be very, very wealthy. If you want to. Here's if, if I may, Mark, here's something else too, guys. If you sign up for the course, this isn't just a, a one and done thing. You can take the course again and again and again. We have a number of, of students who do because I'll, I'll tell you right now, it it really is like, like drinking from a fire hose, trying to, to get all the information down. So don't be afraid to take the course multiple times. You don't have to pay for it each time. Once you pay for it once, you can come back into the course again. So just be aware that you're going to learn a bit more each time and raise your your, your financial IQ just a little bit more each time you do. So uh, just know this isn't just a one-time thing. This is a, you know really a, a lifelong learning uh, progress. And uh, I, I think you're going to see a, a pretty positive change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, I, I, I'm still learning today. Like you there's always something to learn on finances. Um, but I do know how to make lots of money, retire very early and not pay taxes. So I know how to do that. We we were over all the tax codes. Yeah. Become part of the community. We have students who have gone through this course like five times 
just and they they paid for it once and went through it four times more for more just came back and just keep learning so you become part of the community and you get to hang out with other people investors and just uh you know you get to learn pretty fast okay so did we change your thinking okay because remember thinking is just a recycling of the data you've gathered in the past okay if you're trying to solve the problem of i want to become financially free and retire early but your thinking is just that over and over and over and over and over again, you're never going to get there, right? That doesn't make sense. You're always going to come to the, the same equation, okay? But you have to take it out. You have to change your thinking over time. You have to change it and then change it again the next day and change it again the next day, okay? We have to get rid of the bad information, press delete, and then replace it with good information. So if we change your thinking today just a little bit and we gave you some new ideas, you can't do it overnight. It's going to take you eight weeks or maybe more, maybe a year. But once you've done it once, you never go back. I guarantee it. Okay. So um, if we did that, great. And uh, other than that, our next class next week. And I uh, hope we uh, taught you some cool stuff today. Like I said, uh, you you can get the recording of this. Uh, I think we're going to put it on the YouTube channel. And uh, you can, if you want to get some other people, they're like, maybe there's somebody missed, send them in. You want to get them into the course, um, you know, you can do that. And in fact, if you pay for the course and then you bring somebody else, we can even pay you a referral fee on that one. Okay. Now don't do it because you want to make the money due to it because you believe in the content. Okay. So I right, guess have a great evening. Uh, great to have you here. It was, I can't wait to work with another group of people. Um, I know there's some of our students and are on here right now that are going into retirement because of the course and uh, it's going to be fun right? So I want you guys to have freedom. Okay. And the crazy thing is I just, I, it's very difficult to win if you keep doing what everyone else does. Okay. Especially with AI, your job may be gone with AI in five years. What if your both your incomes disappear? What's your 401k going to do? How's that going to help you? <laughs> okay. Now, I mean, if you don't buy real estate, you're going to be in trouble because corporations are buying up all the real estate right now. It's horrible. <laughs> okay. They're, they're, they're reducing the supply, right? It's just crazy. So anyways, get, I think more important than anything is raise your financial IQ right now because the future is not so certain, I think, okay? Unless you raise your financial IQ to at least level four, if not five, six, and seven, which we'll cover in the course, guys. I guess have a great evening. We'll see you uh, next Wednesday uh, for our orientation class. And we're going to teach you what's what's how the financial industry really works um who we're looking for in the perfect portfolio see if you're a good fit so we'll see you guys all right have a great evening it's about 11 o'clock here or something like that and uh you know we'll see you guys same have a good one, guys night. thanks Mark. same bat time same bat channel i guess <laughs> good night thank you